This is Joseph Kurt. Welcome to my storybook. Today, we have we the part one of Lesser Day. Now, part two of this book called Basketball Hall of Famous Karina Abdul Jabbar. We begin this storybook here. Lesser Day of Chapter 1. Now, Chapter 2. As we begin page 31. Chapter 2, Los Angeles, The College Girls Jabari enjoyed being a freshman at UCLA, though he went through pillars of culture shock, California, with its warm sun and cool soft, was very different from New York, with its moody and temperature and gray, pouring in haze. People were so friendly that sometimes he thought that anyone wanted to find a way to make the new basketball player for New York. Became he became because he was accusing me to be all along. The intention he received on campus and on the court would victor them very quickly. Soon he found himself involving people wherever he could. Jabbar find his school wedding assessment easily after working as a reporter. In one class, he wore a paper on the famous jazz club, <coughs> the Vis Vanguard, and his agent and his agent was selected to be read to the class. He was pleased that his writing was so well received and realized that his in the, in the Kennedy training, both at home and at school, had prepared him well. During his first year. Jabbar played on UCLA's freshman basketball team. Coach Woody asked a man named Jay Carter to come to UCLA to have Jabbar learn how to explain his skills. Carter and Jabbar played a lot of one on one. Carter and Austin had jumped up, had him jump up to test a line 18 lessons above the basketball rim. <coughs> and Jabbar practices this set. That's absent twenty times with its heart, with its hand, every day. The truly schedule of the school and effortless, often exhausted Jabbar. One reason was that he was still growing. When he was intended in UCLA, he grew from seven feet to seven feet two inches. Most people had stopped growing by the time they go to college. But Jabbar just keep getting taller. He also worked very hard on his hook, on his hook shot. Kati encourages Jabbar to work at rebounds and agility drills. All the practice helped him develop the shot that will one day become his trademark, the sky hook. The sky hook was an environment hook shot that would seem to float in the air. Then skin right into the bed. Jabbar made a shot while his back was the two, the man guarding him. him. Since his body protecting the ball, and because he jumped so high, his opponents could not stop from, from scoring. It became Jabbar's citizen shot. No one else in college or the pros had one like it. <coughs> no one else had had one like it since. During his first year, the freshman basketball team played the varsity players, a team that was ranked number one in the country. A big crowd of people turned out for the first game playing in Paolo Povola, and they were surprised by the space and outcome. The freshman team won by a margin of 15 points. The ball scored 31 points. The freshman team won partner because the Vajray team did not have anyone who could guard the ball. He was too skilled. If he got the ball, he could score. If the Vajray team sent two men to guard him, he passed the ball to one of his teammates who was open and could also shoot. The ball made good use of the lessons he had learned about teamwork. If he couldn't score, he got the ball to another teammate who could. 
Not only did the Freshman team win against the Varsity team, they also won every game that season with a simple strategy. No one could beat the ball. <coughs> Dan Francis of Michael Atts. The ball was just an assessment by his students. During his freshman year, he went a photograph of of Michael Atts, an outspoken African American leader. Michael Atts preaches against racism in the United States and across the globe. Javon found the story of Michael Atts life was inside. Michael Atts mother was from the Caribbean. Just like his own parents <coughs> and Michael Atts had also lived in Holland. Javon was interested in a man who had traveled paths quite similar to his own. But Michael Atts of photography touches Javon in another way. Two, the civil rights activity had converted them to the religion of the Israel. On the Israel. He had become a Muslim, and this had changed his ideals about life. During Israel, Michael X came to understand that all people were equal. He realized that some people were good and some people were bad. But their God, but their goodness did not depend on their race. It was what felt inside that made the difference. In his photography, Michael S. told the story about meeting a white man who asked, "Do you mind shaking hands with a white man?" Michael S. said, "I don't mind shaking hands with whom it means." Javon thought carefully about how he should treat other people. He had not liked the ways in which others had treated him in his life because of the entity after the 1964 riot in Holland, he had entered a great anger towards white people. Even after reading Michael X's photography, <coughs> Javon wasn't sensitive he could defeat his anger or release it. UCLA's Varsity Basketball The following year, Jabbar became a sophomore and began to play on UCLA's Varsity team. Since two of the senior players had left, we will now have a Varsity team of one junior and four sophomores, unusually for any college Varsity team. Weedy, however, did not have a choice. He made the sophomores, including Jabbar, work very hard because they had to play against seniors with much more experiences. If they weren't careful, <coughs> UCLA's lack of skill would cost them dearly. In the, early, in the early game of the season, the team played against the University of Southern California, USC, and Jabbar scored 56 points, a UCLA record. In the following game, three men were assigned to guard Jabbar. <clears throat> so he only scored 19 points, but Jabbar knew the value of the teamwork and lose the opportunity to pass the ball to his teammates. They scored easily, and UCLA won again. As he said in his book, Queen, he was more hunger for the win than for glory. UCLA's efforts were effectively. They went undefeated that season, unchallenged them by any other team. Winning every contest also means that UCLA went to the National College of Athletic Association NCAA tournament, where they became champions. During the summer after winning the NCAA tournament, Jabal went back to New York and worked for the New York City Housing Authorities, teaching children how to play basketball. He loved being able to show them how to understand the, st the strategies of the game. Jabal didn't earn much money, but felt that he was making a difference in, all, in the lives of the long people that he met. <coughs> In the fall of 1967, 
Jabal returned to UCLA for his junior year. Since the university had not lost a game the previous year, he and his teammates knew every team would want to beat them. Jabal had other assistances. Two, <clears throat> the college basketball rules commitment has changed the rules over the summer and now it was illegal to dunk the ball. One of Jabal's best moves. Yes. He now had to learn to lose different shots. Although he didn't like it at the time, learning in these shots was a sensible. Yeah, during his career, he was employing a virtuous varsity of shots to your own points. And I injury kicked Jabal off the court for several games this that season, and UCLA felt his absence. He stayed in the hospital for three days and blown in a version before he played again against the University of Houston. Jabal was tall. Jabal was tall and couldn't see very well. Even so, UCLA lost the game by only two points. Even tangibly, both Jabbar and UCLA recovered and went on to win the sec season's remaining games. They went to the NCAA tournament again to play the University of Houston in the semifinals. Every one of UCLA's team was determined to win and bounce back with Jabbar's determination. Houston never had a chance. UCLA won by 32 points. UCLA then beat North Carolina and won the tournament again, ending Jabbar's second varsity season just as suspiciously as his first. Jabbar discovers Islamic religion and culture. Meanwhile, Jabbar was still in measures in his college students and was not thinking about his spurs story. He wanted to find a religion that would help him live a good life and be a person of high moral character, but he didn't want to continue practicing Catholic like his parents. He studied other religions, but not felt a person. Minister was still very much in Galilean in me. It made sense to me that there will be one very complex supernatural supreme sources from which all the natural forces of the world will flow. He said in giant steps. Jabal remembered feeling inspired by what he had learned by Islam from Michael X, a photograph. A friend suggesting that he read in the corner of a book of religion thought. The corner was written by the prophet Muhammad in the 7th century AD. Muslims, Muslims believe it was dedicated to Muhammad <coughs> by the angels sent by God. Muslims called God Allah. The Quran is like the Christian Bible. It details the events and reason important to the Muslims. One of the main ideals of the Quran is that all people are equal. Jabal was still angry about the injustice that he did, that he saw in the war, and what and wasn't sure if he agreed with that idea. But most of what. He learned from the Corleone met a great deal to him. During the summer of 1968, Jabal studied Islamic cultures and decided to become a Muslim. He went to a Muslim as Islamic place of the Warsaw and studied and asked to learn more about the religion. Over the summer, Jabal studied in Islamic. Kulsun, Islamic Kulsun, 
and learn how to prepare for the Sabbath or Holy Day, which is Friday for Mishnah. He moralizes and passes from the Quran after the moral study. Gibbard stood up in full witness in a wish career and made in his calendar. This is an alumic right passes. It is done when someone insisted that he or she believes Allah is God and Muhammad is God's messenger. <coughs> After completing his Shadda, Jabbar was considering a Mishnah. Jabbar's teacher gave him a new Mishnah name that was intended only for religion's purpose. The teacher chose the names of a a dual meaning. Silver of Allah and Kareem, which means gorgeous. Jabbar didn't change his name anywhere except at the mishkul where he played. He remains as a goddess in school and on the basketball court, where at the mishkul he was called a dual Kareem. Sometimes this made Jabbar feel unsettled. He felt like Abdul Kareem was now his real name, but he did not want to forget the name his parents gave him. New Friends That summer, <coughs> Jabbar met a man who would become very important to him. Hamas Abdul, Abdul Kanaras, Kanaras, Kanaras was a Muslim who lived in New York. He asked Jabbar about what he had been taught because he felt that his Islam, his Islamic education was unsuffered. When he was Jabbar's crush, when he was asked Jabbar's questions about sensual passes in a in a quarter, Jabbar didn't know that answer. As a result, Jabbar decided to learn more about. Islam from Canada's. Jabal went to his house every morning at 6 a.m. for two hours, an interesting study before a beginning for three hours later. Carlos Carlos taught Jabal to judge others by how well they live their lives and not to base any question on their entire shape or, or skin color. He said that Jabbar should care about them if they were good people. These were the same ideals that were expressed in Michael X or photographically. Now those ideals made more sense. Jabbar was ready to let go of his anger and rage. He believed it was an important lesson to learn. He realized that three that there are always some people from every group who will live without morals morons or violence but judging them but judging them based on the color of their skin was wrong. Jabbar continually learned about Islamic customs. He could not drink alcohol or eat pork. He took his shoes off before entering someone's home. He learned that he sure was a sensual sensual was before praying. He prayed five times a day, facing east toward Moscow, the, ho the hottest city in Eslam. At the end of the summer, Kalalis thought Jabbar had long enough to get him his synagogue again. Afterwards, Kalalis gave him a new name. Kalalis added Jabbar, which means powerful. To the name he already had, Abdul Kareem was now Kareem Abdul Jabbar. At least doing well and with his fellow Muslims. Muslims. It's easy to understand how Jabbar's hearted of racist, racism introducing him to, to the Islamic world. Time and again, he has said that being Muslim forces a person to understand the difference between what is moral and right or wrong. He is blaming as Muslim. 
when you make the wrong choice, you are aware of it. It totally elim eliminates the post possibility of being of being a hypocrite. You can't say I was ignored. It. I think my religious conversations has done me a lot of good. Finally, Jabal told his parents about his conversation. At first, they were openly hostages. It took many years for them to overcome the heart and division they felt within their family. Lives there, his father, Al, recounting the New York Daily News that he that we didn't improve, but that's what he wanted to do. Evidently, we came to terms with his decision. Jabal, Jabal went back to UCLA for his senior year. This time, the team won every game except in the final contest. Generally, time passed slowly, and Jabal had a very lonely year. He didn't think basketball was fun anymore, and he didn't have any other Muslims who wanted to communicate. He had changed the way he lived, but he had no one with whole to share his new ideas and beliefs. He didn't know anyone at UCLA who would understand his new name and religious development. Devotion. Then Jabai met someone else who will become important to him, Bruce Lee. Lee had invented a new style of fighting. He was also a movie star and had been on the television series, The Green Hornet. Jabal learned some fighting skills from Lee. This was something important for Lee because Jabal was so tall, he could reach Lee before Lee could get close enough to Jabal to hit him. But now, Jabal was very angry, not at all awkward like he had been as a boy. Jabal and Lee became friends, which encouraged Jabal during his last year at UCLA. Learning martial arts also helped him become even more positive on the court. The awkward boy from Inwood had a new fine grace. UCLA won its third straight NCAA championship without missing a beat. Jabal was selecting the most outstanding player for the third time in the world. The UCLA team brought the records with five consecutive UCLA titles and for five consecutive NCAA titles and for a consecutive number of tournament games won. In short, the UCLA team had lost only two games out, in, out of the 19 they had played during the three years Jabal was on the team. He ended his wonderful college career as the top scorer in UCLA history, but it was over. It was time to think about playing a professional. Jabal wanted to go back to New York to be near his parents and Canales, but the local team there, the New York Knicks, did not win the right to drive him. Instead, the Milwaukee Bucks won Jabal, so he signed a contract with that team. In June 1969, Jabal graduated from UCLA and embarked on his NBA career. Chapter 3 Milwaukee Jabal signed with the Milwaukee Bucks without considering what life will be, will be like in the small, small West Wisconsin city. For one thing, the winter, the winters were very cold. Jabal had lived through some service windows in New York, but winters in West Wisconsin were much worse. During his first winter in Milwaukee, the no window his apartment can a source shield ice. Also, very few people in Milwaukee knew anything about Islam. Once again, Jabal felt isolated, and because he didn't make his religion public, he continued to live a double life. He was now Kareem Abdul Jabal, but people still call him the Akhlada in public, 
and in a minute. But Rocky was so small in the New York or Los Angeles, and you probably find it difficult to socialize. Because he was Muslim, he could not drink or gamble, which is what some of his teammates did off the court. Yet, even though he didn't fit into his new life in Milwaukee well, Jabbar was still liking him by the Milwaukee fans. When he walked into the he when he walked onto the court for rookie training camp, waiting fans gave him a standing ovation. They were hoping Jabbar will could help the win. They were hoping Jabbar could help them win. The Bucks have played for only one season and they left him through it. But now with a talented kid from UCLA, they had higher hopes. Because Jabbar had been so good in college, he dis has discovered that many people accept him to be on to be even better when he became a professional player. Jabbar felt pressure to live up to their expectations since they demanded perfection. While no one can live up that to that exceptional. Jabbar did his best while in college. Jabbar had played on teams, losing a zone defense, but in a pose. A zone defense was not allowed. Teams had to play man to man. Jabbar would guard one of the other team's favorite forwards to be able to stay near the basket. That way, he could try to block the other team's shots. Jabbar's teammates could count on him to do his job so well that they would consider it on the other strategies, such as stealing the ball. If they fail and other, another player got to shot shoot the ball, Jabbar would be there to block the shot. The team started the season slowly but devoted their, their teamwork. Over the course of the season's first half, Jabbar also discovered that professional basketball was for all more physically intimidated rather than basketball, than college basketball. The other team's player pushed him on the court, behavior that would never be allowed in college. Even Tinsley Jabbar learned to handle this rough style playing. Life off the court. After half a season, the Bucks really began to do well, as he said in Kareem. We went, we went from being the dominant of the league to being a very good team. <clears throat> the Bucks finished the season in second place in their division, which was an amazing feat, considering they had done so poorly the year before. The Bucks had lost to the New York Knicks in the NBA semifinals, but Jabari had such a good season that he was named Rookie of the Year, and under that made him very happy. After the season, Jabari went to Washington, D.C. to visit Carolina, his Islam teacher who had moved there with his family and son Stewart. Jabari wanted to do something to help Carolina as much as Carolina's ha helping him. Carolina's fine has fine building where he could start a muscular and community center. Jabal put the down payment on the building and offered it to get it to his friend. Carolina's, however, did not want to own the building. Instead, he wanted Jabal to be able to sell it to say if he needed to. The house remained Jabbar's property, but Canales and his family lived in Wilsondale. Jabbar stopped by and as often as he could to visit with Father Mishnan and to participate in the community's life. He also contributed money to the center. Besides the Mishnan community, Jabbar also spent money helping his parents. He wanted to make sure they had enough to live well. Jabbar's professional career had given him the ability to live up to the meaning of his Islamic name, Kareem, 
is being girls Carl has influenced Jabbar's life in many ways. Carl has told Jabbar that a Muslim man should be married. Jabbar like a woman who who had John Carl's group. Carl's group. Her name had been J.C. Brown, but Carl's have renamed her Habenel. Hanbeba, Hanaba. After her cover conversation to Islam, Jabal had met Hanaba, but he could, but he didn't have time to get to know her before it was time to go back to Milwaukee. So his interest in, in her won. Building momentum. During the next season, Jabal played very well, and was helped by another player. The boss has son Oscar Robertson, not too known to me as the big O, to play on the third team. Robertson was a great all around player of basketball player. He was six feet five inches, nine inches shorter. Then Jabal, but he was not. Then he was six feet five inches, nine inches taller than the big girl to play on their team. Robinson was a great all-around basketball player. He was six five inches. He was six feet five inches, nine inches shorter than Jabbar. But he was not a center. But he was not a center. He was a guard. A position with heights is less important. Robertson was an inside passer, rebounder, and scorer. Though older than Jabbar and close to retirement, Robertson was still one of the most talented players in the league. One thing that Robertson, Robertson did very well was make assists. That meant his pat that meant he passed the hop the ball to other players to score. Also, if Robertson couldn't pass, Jabbar couldn't attempt to block the player and allow Robertson a clearing shot. <clears throat> Robertson could score quite often, quite often if given the opportunities and both players working all well together. For the first time in his career, Jabbar played against his boyhood, boyhood hero with Chamber with Chamber Valley. Although Chamber Valley had been injured during Jabbar's rookie year, the two centers were now both on the court for the full season. Chamber Valley was known as the top center in basketball. But when he and Jabbar went up against each other, Jabbar held his arm. It would not take long for Jabbar to replace Chamber Valley. Chamberlain as the best player in the same position. By the end of the season, the Bucks went to the to the playoffs. They were only in their third year as a team and as an experienced team. They were set to fall with Jabbar. However, the Bucks had gone from the basement to the finals of the NBA championships in only two seasons. In the championship game, the Bucks faced the Baltimore Bullets, who had won the right to be in the finals by beating the New York Nets. The Nets had taken the Bucks out of the playoffs the year before, and the Bucks had been hoping for the payback instead. They played Baltimore. Jabari and the rest of the Bucks were so hungry for the championship that they swept the Bullets in just four games, giving Jabbar a championship after only two seasons in the league. He was overjoyed. Then Jabbar was named the NBA's most valuable player for the season. Having both honors was a highlight in Jabbar's life. He was so happy in he was so happy he could barely think of anything else. 
the summer after winning 1970's 1971 season. Kibar Mary Haberby at the building he had bought for Carlos to Carlos to use as a muscular. Then he decided that it was time for another big change. That fell. That far. Jabbar literally changed his name from Ferdinand. Ferdinand Lewis Ocular Jr. to Queen Abdul Jabbar. He will no longer live a double life. From now on, anyone would know that he wanted to live his life as a millionaire. During the next basketball season, Jabbar had a different time making anyone understand he had a new name. Many people still call him Lou, but he possessed it, <clears throat> and soon everyone remembered it, and especially his choice. By the end of the next season, Jabbar and the Bucks were in the NBA division playoffs, but they lost to the Los Angeles Lakers for the second time in a row. He was choose to be the release MVP. His disappointment over their Leo's loss was so great, though, that the owner couldn't lift his spirits. Kareem and Heaven and walking that daughter, walking that daughter, who was also named Hannibal. Hannibal. Three weeks after the season ended, in Islam, it is customary to pray that they have, they have at the at a baby spot. The Aham is a prayer that praises Allah. Kareem played the Ahau the Ahau while holding his newborn daughter and felt that enterprises in his heart left completely. He could not know it at this point at that point, but his joy will only be temporary. Tragedy strikes. In January 1973, Jabbar received terrible news. Some men went to the house he had bought for cars and had killed several people, including some of Carlisle's children. The men had intended to kill Carlisle, but when they found he wasn't at home, they shot whoever they was there. Many people who wasn't at the house when driving. Even Jabbar. Everywhere he went, Jabbar had police escort. Jabbar, Jabbar was devastated. He flew the country and traveled around the world, including North Africa, where many Muslims live. He had taken a costume in a bell at Harvard University the year before. And now he was finally able to lose some of the knowledge he's learning. He enjoyed speaking about and about and about when he could and learn about the tradition of different cultures. Despite his journey, that year continued to be a tragic one. When he was out of the country. He heard that his old friend and martial artist teacher, Bruce Lee, had died. Jabari had filmed a few scenes in a movie called Gain of Death with Lee, he had, and he had hoped to see him again. Now he would never get that chance. When he returned to life in Milwaukee, he realized that he and Harvey weren't happy together. They discussed their marriage and decided to separate. Hannibal went to Washington, D.C. to be with Carlisle's community, and Jabbar remained in Milwaukee. Those championship bucks. It's still a healing sad. It's still a healing being sad. Jabbar put all his energy into his basketball career. Oscar, the big old Robertson, still played for the Bucks. And the team had a talent bench to call when calling on when it's fouled out or needed to rest. With no witness and any precision, 
Bucks won game after game. By the end of the season, they had the best record in the league. The Bucks had beaten the Lakers and the Chicago Bulls to face the Boston Celtics, the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals in 1974. Both teams battled every interesting. Game six was tied at the end of the regulation play and went into overtime with only seven seconds to go. The Celtics were ahead by one point. The Bucks had one chance to tie it again, and Jabbar hit the ball right into the basket. Now the game went into double overtime. The Bucks remained focused and won the match by one point, causing much excitement and a sleepless night for Jabbar. The sixth game had been as sighted, but the Bucks still needed to win, but the Bucks still needed to win game seven. The Bucks lost that game to the Celtics, leaving Jabbar without an NBA championship again. Then that season did not go well for the Bucks either. Oscar Robertson retired. Several players were traded, and Jabbar was injured. He brought a bone in his hand, and another player going in him in the eye. The Bucks finished last in their division. Jabbar felt Desperate, he had never played on a losing team effort before. He had never played on a losing team before. His eye and hand held, but too slowly for him to help his team win. After their second, after their second eye injury, Jabbar began running protecting the gargoyle during all games. Jabbar decided it was time to leave Milwaukee. He was not happy, even though his fans remembering remembering him faithful. They slot they showed up when the team was winning and when they were losing. Best of all, they always showed the player they liked and they liked Jabbar. It was the fans that had kept him in Milwaukee for so long. But now it was time to go. The boss agreed to trade him, and Jabbar will play for the Los Angeles Lakers during the 1975-1976 season. That's all for the book for now. For the end of part two, the final part three comes tomorrow. Of this book called Kareem Abu Jabbar, the Basketball Hall of Fame. And for that, we say so long, and we'll see you tomorrow. Today, I'm just a good.